Everybody. The intention of the Mass is for the people of the parish. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. On this Feast of the Holy Family, we remember that the family is the basic cell of society. It is a communion of love. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my ways, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory to God, the height of the heavens. These two God's people, His people on earth. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Father, glory and worship, 
my hand is giving to you, Lamb of God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. In each way, the sins of the world of mercy on us receive our prayer. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. In power, the right of the Father, Jesus the Lord is the Lord, the Most High. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory, glory, glory to God. Mm. Of love everlasting, bringing in glory forever. Amen. Glory, glory, glory to God, glory, glory, glory to God. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so, in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Ecclesiasticus. The Lord honours the father in his children and upholds the rights of a mother over her sons. Whoever respects his father is atoning for his sins. He who honours his mother is like someone amassing a fortune. Whoever respects his father will be happy with children of his own. He shall be heard on the day when he prays. Long life comes to him who honours his father. He who sets his mother at ease is showing obedience to the Lord. My son, support your father in his old age. Do not grieve him during his life. Even if his mind should fail, show him sympathy. Do not despise him in your health and strength, for kindness to a father shall not be forgotten, but will serve as reparation for your sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. O blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. By the labour of your hands you shall eat. You shall be happy and prosper. O O blessed are those those who fear fear the Lord and and walk in his ways. ways. Your wife like a fruitful vine in the heart of your house. Your children like shoots of the olive around your table. O blessed are those those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. ways. Indeed, thus shall be blessed the man who fears the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion all the days of your life. O O blessed blessed are those those who fear the Lord and and walk walk in his ways. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You are God's chosen race, his saints. He loves you and you should be clothed in sincere compassion, in kindness and humility, gentleness and patience. Bear with one another. Forgive each other as soon as a quarrel begins. The Lord has forgiven you. Now you must do the same. Over all these clothes, to keep them together and complete them. Put on love. And may the peace of Christ reign in your hearts, 
because it is for this that you were called together as parts of one body. Always be thankful. Let the message of Christ, in all its richness, find a home with you. Teach each other and advise each other in all wisdom. With gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms and hymns and inspired songs to God. And never say or do anything except in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, give way to your husbands as you should in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and treat them with gentleness. Children, be obedient to your parents always, because that is what will please the Lord. Parents, never drive your children to resentment, or you will make them feel frustrated. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand to greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. <coughs> May the peace of Christ reign in your hearts. Let the message of Christ find a home with you. Alleluia. May Lord be out on your lips when I will proclaim his gospel in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the day came for them to be purified as laid down by the law of Moses, the parents of Jesus took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, observing what stands written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male must be consecrated to the Lord and also to offer in sacrifice in accordance with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves of two or two young pigeons. Now in Jerusalem, there was a man named Simeon. He was an upright and devout man. He looked forward to Israel's comforting and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death until he had set eyes on the Christ of the Lord. Prompted by the Spirit, he came to the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus, to do for him what the law required, he took him in his arms and blessed God, and said, Now, Master, you can let your servant go in peace, just as you promised, because my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for all nations to see, a light to enlighten the pagans and the glory of your people, Israel. As the child's father and mother stood there, wondering at the things that were being said about him, Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, You see this child? He is destined for the fall and for the rise of many in Israel, destined to be a sign that is rejected, and a sword will pierce your own soul too, so that the secret thoughts of many may be laid bare. There was a prophetess also, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, the tribe of Asia. She was well on in years, her days of girlhood over. She had been married for seven years before becoming a widow. She was now 84 years old and never left the temple, serving God night and day with fasting and prayer. She came by just at the moment and began to praise God. And she spoke of the child to all who looked forward to the deliverance of Jerusalem. When they had done everything the law required, they went back to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. Meanwhile, the child grew to maturity and he was filled with wisdom and God's favour was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. (laughs) 
I'm not sure whether I've been watching too much skiing on the telly, but I might be a little bit off-piste as I get through this homily today. So let's put aside any idea of chronology and try to make sense of things for a moment. The church draws upon scriptures written at different times by different people about different events. And if we're not careful, it won't make sense. But they're all revelations, all enlightening. We're yet to hear and celebrate the epiphany, the coming of the Magi, or the escape to Egypt. It can all be explained in sequence, but not here, because it could take far too long. Today, Luke's account and the Associated Testaments fulfill your Judaic tradition of Jesus, yet so important to our own Christian way of life as the Gentile people. Our readings turn towards the celebration of today, the nucleus of the family, the importance of father and mother, the importance of children, the importance of being one in unity. But it goes far beyond that. Mary and Joseph are doing what is right in their community of their time, taking their newborn son to the temple, eight days old, to be circumcised and dedicated to God. I bet they had no idea what was going to happen when they got into that temple. They were following God's directions by faith. The faith of Mary and Joseph is an example to us all. They had named their son Jesus. And today it was just like registering his name at the temple. Today they met two elderly people, Simeon and Anna, who before they died wanted to meet the Messiah. They wanted to see God's promised saviour. And to do today's prayer passage, their prayers were answered. As the family come to the temple, Simeon is moved by the Holy Spirit. His whole life has been waiting for the consolation of Israel. The sending of a saviour. The people had been waiting, and Simeon had been waiting all his faithful life, and many doubted whether the Christ would ever come. Faithful believers were confident in waiting for God to fulfill his promises, still praying for God to console the people and rescue them from their oppression, trusting that God would send his long-awaited Messiah. <laughs> Simeon and Anna were so happy in seeing Jesus, he brought them the comfort they were looking for, the hope that they had been waiting for. The birth of Christ meant that their determined faith, their belief, had brought its promise, its benefits. That's why Simeon took baby Jesus in his arms and praised God. He knew that he could now die in peace and with great hope for the future of God's people. Simeon quoted Isaiah in his words, summing up Jesus had come to bring salvation and revelation. The salvation Jesus brought was, as we understand, the forgiveness for sin and the hope beyond the grave. The revelation of God's character, of his grace, of his love for his people. Jesus came to replace the speculation about God with the revelation. He eventually declared, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Remember, this revelation and salvation was offered to all people, 
Jesus will reveal God in the sight of all people, to the Gentiles, as well as to the Jewish people. That revelation was for us. Mary and Joseph marveled at what Simeon had said about Jesus. Christ's coming was such great news to both Simeon and Anna. But the greatest news was for us as Christian believers. Every generation since our Lord. Believing God's promise does pay off in the end for each and every one of us. Many of us are looking forward to a coming year. Some hoping that this year is perhaps better than last year. As Christians, we also wait for Christ's second coming, whenever it's going to be. But now I ask, how should we wait? What's the right way to wait for Christ's return? Live our lives as we wait. What can we learn from Simeon and Anna's example? Well, the first is the importance of prayer. For both focus their lives on prayer. That prayer develops a close relationship for us with Jesus, for, with God. We should be committed to be faithful in our prayer life. The commitment should also be there in reading scriptures, for they're the foundation of our lives. It tells us that Simeon did not wait for the Christ. It tells us that Simeon and Anna did not wait for Christ on their own. They waited in the community of the temple. The Bible tells us that Christians need to keep meeting together. As we meet here today, we worship together. We hear God's words preached together. Our community of faith and hope in togetherness will grow and continue to grow. As it says in Hebrews, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing but let us encourage one another. Might I suggest then, in 2024, we each turn to study our Bible. We each turn to pray together. It's essential for all of us to have a relationship, not only with one another, but in so doing, having a relationship with God. Anna spent her time praying and worshipping God. With our busy lives, must we not be able to devote more of our time to prayer? Anna's behaviour challenges us to give up a lot, to make prayer a higher priority, to make it a deeper part of our daily lives. Simeon was open to the Holy Spirit to work in his life. Are we open to let the Holy Spirit work in ours? There's one final way we should await Christ's return. When Simeon saw Christ, he immediately praised God in public, allowing others to overhear him. And when Anna met the baby Jesus, she spoke about him to everyone around him. We should be doing the same. Whether it's over a cup of coffee with friends, in a pub with those we meet, in a canteen at work, or simply around our own dinner table at home. We can and must share our faith with others. For this is our Christian hope, that many will come to know and love God. Jesus tells us we are to tell others about him.
So how great is it that God uses you and me to bring others to Christ? How marvellous it is if our non-Christian family and friends, our colleagues this year, come to marvel at Jesus like Mary and Joseph did in the temple and through his life. How wonderful if we know and begin to praise, we know people who we can bring to praise God in 2024. Like Sam, Simeon and Anna did 2,000 years ago. God opened the eyes of Simeon and Anna to recognize Jesus as the baby to bring salvation. May God use each one of us to open other people's eyes to Christ. Lord, we pray that you keep us strong in faith. Unite all of us in fellowship. And intentionally in bringing into a relationship with you others who may not know of your love and grace. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, <coughs> His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, who has baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the church. By following the values and teaching of our Lord and Saviour, may we always be one loving family. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all children of the book. May all Christians, Jews and Muslims of all denominations, and particularly those in the Holy Land, grow closer in tolerance and peace under the care of the one true Father who loves us all. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all families in areas of conflict, many of whom are separated from loved ones. We remember all hostages and refugees and pray they may be reunited soon in more peaceful times. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all in our parish family and especially for those who are ill or infirm particularly those unable to join us in person at Mass. May they know that they are not forgotten and are always in our prayers. We also remember those who have died, both recently and in the past, and all who rest in the joy of the presence of our Father in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We ask our Blessed Lady, Mother to us all, to join us in our prayers as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Bless us our hearts from him, and bless us the fruit of thy own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this now. Let us pray for a moment in the silence of our own hearts for our own intentions. Lord Jesus, help our parents to see their children as a sacred trust and to realize that parenting is a God-given vocation and mission. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness you have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, the holy Lord, God of power and might, ever and dead, uphold of your glorious Son, those on the in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, as on earth in the highways, as on earth in the highways. <coughs> you are indeed holy, O Lord. And all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. 
In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their blessing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. <coughs> Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a gesture of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you tend under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be.
body of Christ. 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 Tomorrow, New Year's Day, Mass will be at 10 a.m. The rest of the week services this coming week will be at the normal time, 9.30 each day, with morning prayer at 9.15. Next Sunday, the Epiphany of the Lord, Masses will be at 9 a.m. and 11 o'clock. Two Masses next Sunday. If you would like to help with reading at Mass, church cleaning, gardening, the children's liturgy, leading morning prayers on weekdays, or any other way that you think you would assist in the parish, please speak to me or to Pete Graham. Next baptism preparation is on the 4th of January at 7.30 here in church. Please take a newsletter home with you so that you can read about other news and events. Thank you. Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, 
so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass is ended. in royal David's seat stood old God, old God to share where a mortal laid a baby in ocean the glory's birth Mary on the Father Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.